Hey y'all, what's going on? Happy Monday. Good. Unplug this because I'm all charged up. I really need to get up and go to the bathroom. That's what I need to do. I wanted to play some music. My husband was just playing some music that was like, had me over here gigging a little bit. Let me see. Hey, Vernita. What's up, girl? How was your weekend? I'm boiling some water in my um, kettle downstairs. So I'm listening so I can have my son go downstairs and turn that water off because I am drinking me some sleepy time tea, baby. I drank some last night. And when I tell you guys I had a good sleep, aside from having to get up and use the bathroom all night, but you know. Hey, Terry. <laughs> Hi, Gail. Thank you, Terry. Oh, every time I think I say your name, Siri think I'm talking to them. See, look at that. No. Hi, Jacqueline. Jacqueline. I almost messed your name up. I'm sorry. Yay. All right. All right. Whew. So it's windy here in Florida. And we have a, um, what do they call that? A cold front coming through. Thank you, Terry, for the cold front. Every time... There is very cold weather back at home. I'm from Michigan. It comes down this way. You know, it just moves on down south and gives us a little taste. And it's not as cold as it is at home. But it is chilly. Did you? I didn't see it. What Facebook group did you post it in? I didn't see it, Vernita. I got to order my new shirts that I did. Um, I have them in my cart and I'm going to get them for myself this weekend. So super excited about it. I ordered all my books that I've done. Um, I was able to order them um, for print fee only because I'm the author. And so I ordered all six. And so I can't wait till they come so I can show them because I have this one. But this one is an author copy, I think, because it has that thing across it. And so I think the, um, you guys are getting some ice tonight, Terry. Oh, Lord. You got, be careful, because I know you work nights. Be careful out there. I know that black ice ain't no joke. Ain't no joke. So today, guys, I'm going to be talking about an additional service that you can possibly add to your portfolio of the services that you already provide. Um, I was given the opportunity to do it. Now, what it is, is immigration form specialists. Okay. So for those of you who are not familiar, the NNA, they came out with this some years ago. They actually have a training course and it is on sale right now, actually. So um, if you're interested and learning more about it. The NNA is a really good resource. I am writing a blog on it as well. And I'm going to post it when I get some more information. Because I hate to put information out there and then you don't have all of the information, you know. So I'm just doing my research on it. So I had a customer call me and I think it was Friday. They called me Thursday for an appointment Friday. I believe that's when it was. But in any event, called me the day before and said, hey, I need some help filling out my immigration documents. Can you do that? Or do you do that? And so I was like, are you asking me about notarizing a document? And they're like, no, it doesn't need to be notarized. I just need some help in filling it out. 
And so I was like, oh, well, yeah, I can do that, you know, because I had already offered a service on my website where I would assist people with doing things that they weren't comfortable doing themselves. You know, you know how some people, they just kind of want somebody to sit there while they're doing it. And if they have any questions, even though the information is right there, they just want to ask somebody else, you know. So I was already offering a service like that. I have an elderly woman who does not use computers. And whenever she calls me, she needs me to do something with her. It's never do it for her. It's do it with her. So like um, she has some family matters in Canada. And so she was like, I need to get this document. They gave me this link and they sent it to my email. But when I pull it up on my Kindle, I don't have any way to print it or look at it for that matter. And so I told her, okay, well, you can come over, um, email it to me, and then I can pull it up, print it out for you. So in pulling up, I'm sorry, in pulling up the document from the email, she needed to fill out some information and then print it. So I sat there with her while she filled out the information, and then I printed it out for her. And so I was like, well, that was easy. It didn't include me giving any legal advice. I didn't do it for her. I simply gave her the resources to do it, right? And then if she had any questions, like, well, what are they asking me for here? And then I can read it again. And she'll say, oh, okay. Because for some people, you ever read something and you're like, I don't know what they're asking me. And you hear somebody else read it and you're like, oh, that ever happened to you? Happens to me. <laughs> so that's kind of how that went. So with the person who came to my home, well, let me backtrack. Before they came to my home, they were like, can you help me with that? I said, yes. He said, what do you charge for that? And so automatically I was like, I just charge a time fee because I don't know exactly what the documents are that they need to fill out. And I don't know how long it's going to take. So I can't offer a flat fee for that type of service. I was thinking it might take some time. So let me charge you by the hour. Now, if anybody knows me, which most of you do, I like to break things down in minutes because if you're there for an hour, let's say you're there for an hour and 15 minutes. I just personally don't want to do the math. So if I do 60 minutes time, however long you hear, that works out better for me. So I told the person, when you break down $36 an hour, it equals 60 cent per minute. So I told him it'll be 60 cent a minute. And so he said, wait, excuse me, is this 60 cent? I said, yes. He was like, oh my goodness. And he started to laugh. And I said, yeah, because I don't know how long it's going to take. And so he was like, that's fine. He got an Uber to my place. And um, it was a trans man. Um, so he was a pretty man um, with lipstick on and nice clothing and nice hair. And I was like, okay, all right. So um, imagine my surprise when I opened up my front door, like, why, hello. You know, every time a customer comes over, I always introduce myself to them. Even though they already know who they're coming to see, I just feel like it is a professional way to greet a person, right? I don't know you. You don't know me. I say, hi, my name is Burjo. And then they'll say, oh, hi, my name is so-and-so. I extend my hand. We shake. They come in. I show them where to sit right there at my desk. So he sits at the desk and he has a whole folder of papers and all these different type of things. Right. And so I'm like, yeah, we're going to be here for a minute. Just in my mind. Excuse me. So he sits down and he tells me that he needs to renew his work visa. He needs to fill out an asylum um, application and he needs to um, fill out a waiver. So he can fill out a waiver for the fee for the asylum. And so I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, so my first resource and which would be your first resource as well is to go to USCIS.gov. Okay. That is the, um, what is that? United Citizenship Immigration 
something. I don't know. <laughs> I can't break it down for you, but that is what it is. And I went there and I'm pretty good with, you know, doing research and stuff on a computer. As soon as you go to the site, they have different tabs at the top. One of the tabs is forms. So I clicked on forms and it did a drop down and then I clicked on all forms. And so me and him together, we searched for the forms that he needs. We found the forms that he needed together and then I clicked on them. Now, there are some documents that you can fill out and file online. There are some documents that you can download and fill out, but you must print it out and mail it. Okay, so those are the two options. So the forms that he needed to fill out could not be filed online. So what I did was I downloaded all three forms and he sat there and he filled them out and I sat there and I watched. When he got to my home, I got to, I went to my phone and I'm sure you guys have this on. Oh, it's still here. I'm sure you guys have this on Android. I have an iPhone as well. I started my um, timer under stopwatch. I started my timer. This is how long the appointment took. I still have it here. Two hours and 13 minutes, which is 133 minutes, right? Am I right? 60, 60, 120 plus 13. Yeah, 133. So the visit ended up being 133 minutes. When I put that into my bookkeeping software, it came up to like 70 something bucks. And then I charged him a $5 fee for each application that I printed and to scan and copy all of the evidence that he needed to provide. Okay. So I watched him fill out the application and then I reviewed the application when he was done. And I asked him questions. Did you mean to put your birthday? No, did you mean to put the day you arrived in the United States for your birthday? And we laughed about it because when he arrived, it was April of last year. Well, that can't be your birthday. So he changed it to his birthday. Okay. And then he had his A number incorrect. He had documents showing what his A number was. And he ended up getting confused with the A number and the online account number. So because he had documents, I was able to see, oh, this is your A number. And then this other one is the online account number. So he was able to change that. So all in all, I was just there to be a quality check, really. Um, he did come to a question where he um, didn't understand if it was asking to for him to just put all his schools or was it asking him to put all his schools in order. And so the question stated, list your schools starting with the most current one. And so he was like, are they asking me to put like the last school I went to and then everyone before that? And I said, yes. He said, oh, okay. I'm so glad you're here for me to ask questions. I said, absolutely. And so he filled out that. And then he came to a section where it asked him to tell a story. Give detail about um, what happened and why you are seeking asylum in our country. What will happen if you go back to your country? And so he had a whole story to tell. And he asked me, if I tell you the story, can you type it for me? I said, yes, I can. He told me his story. I typed everything word for word. I didn't correct anything. I didn't tell him, do you think this will sound better? Nothing. Whatever he said, I typed it word for word, no matter how it sounds, because this is his application. It's not my job to make sure that anything is the way I think it should be. Everything has to be the way that he says it is, right? Because I'm not there to give him any legal advice. I'm not a legal advisor. I'm not an attorney. I mean, I'm not a legal representative. I'm not an attorney. I'm just there to watch and review. So we did that. He finished all of that. We printed it. 
he signed it. Um, I made extra copies because he was going to have to send that copy to USCIS office. So we did two copies a piece. I didn't charge him for the extra copy once I printed the application. I did charge him for copying his evidence. Now the evidence are proof documents that is on a checklist that is already accompanied with the application. So it's not anything I have to figure out. The application um, had a checklist on the website and we just looked at the checklist and he had already brought everything in the in that um, envelope that he brought with him. And so he was pulling out everything and I was making copies for him. I did not charge him per item that I copied. I charged him a one-time fee for all of the evidence that was just copied in whole. Okay. So all in all, I made um, $84 and some change off the whole visit. He was very happy and pleased with my services and he left me a review. All right, let me see what you guys are putting. Oh, Vernita. Yeah, I didn't see it. Hi, Jay. So what do you guys think about my immigration forms specialist experience? Now, I want to share with you guys my screen because I want to show you. Thank you, Vernita. That is one thing that you have to have with that type of appointment. You do have to have patience. As you can see, it took us a two hours and 13 minutes. So patience is important. I'm going to share my screen with you guys so I can show you the USCIS website. If you've been to the website before, then this will not be unfamiliar to you. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Jay. It did. It went very well. The person was very pleased with me. And he was a doll. He really was. All right. So USCIS.gov. All right. So this is the website. Let me change how the screen looks here. Because I want the screen to be as big as possible. Okay. So this is the um, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services website. Ah, there you go. USCIS. Okay. Yes, Terry, you are right. You have to have to read. And this is why this is a good service for notaries to offer, because as a notary, we all know you have to read. Okay. You can't just be signing and stamping all willy nilly. You must read. So this is the USCIS website. This is going to be your top resource for this type of service because this information is updated on a regular basis. And just like with notary, if you don't follow the instructions, their information can be delayed and nobody wants to go through that. It's not a quick process at all when you file these immigration documents, okay? Some people, they have to wait months, okay? So you want to make sure that you're following the instructions and helping the um, client follow the instructions. So here, you see here where it says forms. Click on the drop down. It has family-based forms in this column, employment-based forms in this column, humanitarian-based forms in this column. The most accessed forms they have is here is the application to register as a permanent resident, application for employment authorization, and application to replace a permanent resident card, i.e. green card, and then application for naturalization, okay? When he came over, I didn't know what he was looking for. Um, I think this was it. No, it was this one. This is the one we filled out. But I clicked all forms. Now, just like with you being a notary, remember, you cannot choose the type of notarization if it's not already present, right? The same thing goes for immigration documents. If a person calls you and they're explaining to you what they're trying to do, you cannot recommend, you cannot suggest, you cannot choose the form that you think that they should fill out. If 
they have questions about what type of form they should fill out, you should refer them to an immigration legal representative or an immigration attorney. At that point, you cannot assist them. So it's really important to do your research first, okay? Because I know all of this probably sounds exciting. Like, yeah, you know, any extra service that you can, you know, add to your portfolio is exciting. But every state has their own regulations on what you can and cannot do. Furthermore, every state has a different title for this type of role that you're going to be playing um, in the client's um, um, goal to fill out these immigration documents, right? Here in Florida, we will be considered an immigration form specialist. Am I an immigration specialist? No, I am not. An immigration, if I advertise myself as an immigration specialist, that means that I have knowledge on immigration practice and law, and I do not. So you have to be very, very careful how you advertise yourself to the public when you are talking about helping them fill out immigration documents. I also found, and this is for Florida, everybody who's watching, I know you're not all from Florida, but please do your research, okay? I don't want you to watch my video and say, well, Brajol said that I can do it. No, I did not. <laughs> no, I did not. I said that it is a good option to add to your services, but you must do your own research in your state. And your state will have information for you to be able to um, tell whether or not you can do this. In some states, you have to have an additional bond. In some states, you need to have a um, certification or a license. Um, in some states, you have to be an attorney, period, and you cannot do it. So please make sure before you start advertising that you can do this service, make sure that you are not um, penalizing yourself, okay? You don't want to get in trouble. So here, it, I'm in Florida, and this is the information I found, okay? So this is from the Florida Bar, okay? Why is there confusion about notaries? The Florida notary in the practice of law. What about a notary in Latin American countries, resources, unlicensed practice of law branch offices? I'm going to go to the Florida law and the practice of law here, and I'm going to read it. Okay. The Florida notary public certifies that deeds, affidavits, depositions, and other writings are authentic or genuine. A Florida notary may also give oaths, make certificates of oaths, and perform marriages. Now, I want you to pay close attention to the next statement I'm going to read. Notary publics cannot give legal advice, nor can they prepare immigration forms while holding themselves out as knowledgeable in immigration law and practice. They cannot draw up wills, contracts, leases, or other documents that might affect your legal rights. Okay, I'm going to read it again. Notary publics cannot give legal advice, nor can they prepare immigration forms while holding themselves out as knowledgeable in immigration law and practice. So, yes, we can help them fill out the forms. We cannot prepare those forms for them. So if a person calls you, hey, I need you to... Um, prepare these immigration documents for me. I'll just give you all my information. No, that's not how that works. You can provide for them, like I did, a computer or an iPad, okay? With their guidance, you can pull up the form that they said they need. Are you to tell them if that's the right form or not? No, that's not our jurisdiction. That's practice in law. If you're helping them choose between documents, okay? They have to know what document they need. If they do not know, they need to consult legal advice, okay? And that's not you, okay? In offering this service, you also should network with immigration attorneys because if you do have to refer a person you don't want to send them back to Google. Like I hate, 
when a person comes to a person for help and then you end up sending them back to Google, it's like they're back at square one. This is very frustrating. So I think as a business professional that it's important for you to have um, an arsenal of different people that have diff that have different roles. You know, they're all in different industries, right? But they're people that you can trust will take care of the person who contacted you. I do that when I go to networking events. I keep a um, contact of every person that does every different thing because sometimes I have customers that come to me and they don't need a notary at all, but they trust me to refer them to a person that they need for whatever they're calling me for. So I definitely try to make sure that I have a list of every type of person that does every little thing I could think of that I think my customers could um, rely on for services. Okay. And you should do the same. Even with you having a list of people that you can refer them to, there are also um, free legal advisors that you can refer them to or legal representatives. And it is listed under the resources. Um, uh, let me see where it's at. So I'm back on USCIS website. Uh, let's see. I don't see it. Oh, you know what? I think it's under here. So I'm under tools right now because I saw it had a, a list of people that you could refer people to. And I think it's really cool. But also, I think that if you're going to refer them, don't just give them the list. Okay. Do your due diligence for them in calling those people to see which ones you think would be a good fit. That way, your person is going to get the help they need. Uh, I swear you can never find something when you're looking for it. <laughs> I swear. Mm. Where is it? Is it here? No. I swear it's a list I came across. I should have bookmarked it. That's what I should have did. Oh, well. I'm not finding it, guys. <laughs> But it, it is here. Um, if they ask you where they can find a USCIS office, you can click here and you can find it for them. Okay. You're correct, Terry. You are correct. But in Michigan, I did read something different. So yes, you cannot advertise yourself as, um, no. So you can advertise yourself as being able to help a person with the documents. Okay. Knowing how to fill out the documents, but you cannot advertise yourself as being an expert on, um, immigration law or practice. Okay. Um, And I'm just going to pull up the website here. Hold on. Let's see. Because there's a list of states. Michigan is on there. Okay, so states that allow non-attorney immigration assistance providers. We have Arizona, California, Georgia, Illinois, Maryland, Maine, Michigan, 
Minnesota, Nevada, New York, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Utah, and Washington. States that restrict or ban non-attorney immigration assistance providers will be Oregon, Colorado, Tennessee, North Carolina. Okay. And this is from the NNA's website. Uh, I want to find, they had on here where you can click on the different states to see. Here it is. Let me move this over here. Or you know what? I can, let me close that. I can pull it up right here, dum dum. <laughs> uh, Oops. Michigan immigration forms assistance. Mm. Okay, so in Michigan, those people are called an immigration clerical assistant. And if you look here, the states have different names for that type of help, okay? And you are the form specialist. You are not the immigration specialist. You are not the specialist in immigration law or practice. You are only specializing in knowing how to fill out forms. That's it. <clears throat> and let me see. I wanted to see what, okay, here it goes. Here we go. Now let's click on Michigan. It says defines Michigan immigration, I'm sorry, clerical assistant and specifies authorized duties, sets limited fees, and specifies prohibited acts and penalties. Okay. So for Michigan, they set the limit on what you can charge. They specify what duties you can perform. And they also have prohibited acts and penalties when it comes to this type of um, this type of thing. Okay, so you want to look it up. I wonder if this number means anything. Let's Google that number. That may be a state statute or something. Here it is. There you go. See. So let's look at that. I'm not going to read it because um, it's a lot of information, but what I'll do is I'll drop the link in the chat for you. You're welcome. Hopefully that comes up. There's the PDF for you right there, Terry. All right, guys. So that's all I have for the immigration form specialist that I wanted to States that limit or prohibit, prohibit. Let's see. Oh, see. So I think you're going to find all that information in that document link that I shared for you. Did anybody else have any questions about helping those who need to fill out immigration forms? with doing so. If you can't do it in your state, totally understand. Um, if there's a special licensure or certification or a bond that you have to have in your state, you need to know that. You need to do your own research in your state before you try to do anything like this. And I think that I don't know. Florida is a different type of <laughs> beast when it comes to this type of thing. Uh, we don't have any regulations other than the one I just read. So that's kind of good for us. All right. So now I wanted to continue on with our scenario game, our notary scenario game. Um, do you guys remember what number we left off on? I think it was seven, wasn't it? We stopped at seven. Yeah, I think we left off scenario seven. 
Okay, good, Terry. I'm glad to hear that. So I'm going to start on scenario seven. So how this works is I'm going to read the scenario. I'm going to ask the questions. And in the comments, was it six? I think we did six, right? And then we had to, we started we start from seven. Yeah, I think we had this six. Well, we can start on number six. Not a big deal. All right, so you guys remember what I said. I'm going to read the scenario. You are going to drop your answers into the comments. All right. So number six, your customer calls you to get a general affidavit signed and notarized. <laughs> you set the appointment, explain to the customer what will be required. You meet the customer and they arrive prepared with document in hand. You review the document and notice that the certificate wording states on this date before me, a notary public appeared signer who subscribed and sworn to or affirmed to the accuracy of the above mentioned information. What type of notarization is this? Gotta drop it in the comments, guys. What type of notarization do you think that is? Okay. Um, you review the document and notice that the certificate wording states on this date before me a notary public appeared signer who subscribed and sworn to and affirm uh, sworn to or affirmed to the accuracy of the above mentioned information what type of notarization is this nope terry it's not an acknowledgement correct it is a jurat Remember, a jurat is a sworn statement. So if a person is swearing to the true, um, the trueness of the information contained in the document, then that is a jurat. Good job, guys. Now, because this is a jurat, what additional step is required? So jurat, so we have to perform one more additional step before we sign and notarize it. It's okay, Terry. Correct. You have to administer an oath to them. So you're going to tell them what? What is a short way to administer an oath? Let me see what you guys... Let me see what your words are. Did yes, Bernita, you're right. You're going to raise your, have them raise their um, right hand. And you're going to give them an oath. But what does your oath sound like, guys? I want to hear it. Type it into the comments. Good job, Jay. That's short and sweet. Do you swear or affirm the information in the document is true? I swear or I affirm. I'm keeping it moving. All right. Awesome. All right, guys. Let's go on to scenario number seven. You meet the customer. And they arrive prepared with document in hand. You review the document and notice that the certificate is missing required elements to complete the process. The venue is missing. The type of ID produced is missing. And how the customer appeared is missing. What do you do? Good job, Terry. Yep.
Gail, are you answering the question for number six? Yes, you are right. Number six was a jurat. But for number seven, you read the document and you notice that the venue is missing, the type of ID produced is missing, and how the customer appeared is missing. So what do you do? Well, Vernita, close. I didn't say that the type of notarization was missing. I only said that the elements were missing. Yes. So you meet the customer and they arrive prepared with document in hand. You review the document and notice that their certificate is missing required elements to complete the process. The venue is missing. The type of ID produced is missing. And how the customer appeared is missing. What do you do? Bernita said it. Based on the type of notarization it is, you're going to attach a certificate. Too many elements missing. Now, what if the document preparer is saying that they don't want you to attach a certificate? Then what are you going to do? I don't want you to attach a certificate. I want you to notarize it the way it is on this paper. What are you going to do? There are two things you can do. One, if there is enough room, correct, Bernita. If there's enough room on the document, you can just hand write it in. Or if you have a, um, a certificate stamp, you can stamp it. If there is not enough room, you need to explain to the person they either need to prepare the document and um, make sure that all of the elements that you give them are in there, or you're going to have to attach a loose certificate. That is just what it is. Okay. So good job, guys. Scenario number eight. Your customer calls you to get a bank document signed and notarized. They inform you that the signer is disabled and has a hard time signing. He was told that he could sign by mark or by proxy. The customer is unsure of how that works and asks you to explain. What do you do? Gail, you will swear. You will swear or affirm that the information is true. Swear is to God. Affirm is on your own honor. So for scenario eight, guys, what are we going to do? The customer is unsure of how signing by mark or signing by proxy works, and they're asking you to explain it to them. So what do you say? <laughs> All right, Renita. I see, Gail. I think you may have um, a slow connection. Good job, Renita. You should definitely reference your handbook when you are asked questions that you are just unsure of. And furthermore, you should know whether or not you can perform that type of um um, process in your state. In Florida, we can. So when you sign by mark, you're going to need witnesses. Okay. The witnesses are going to witness the person signing by mark. And then they're also going to go into your journal as witnessing the signature by mark. All right. How do they sign by mark? They can do an X, they can do an O, they can do a thumbprint. And then you're going to write that this is so-and-so's mark. 
by the mark, around the mark, however you need to do it, under the mark, then the witnesses are going to sign on the side of that or above it or wherever there's room. Okay. Signing by proxy. Now, um, usually if a person wants somebody to sign on their behalf, they will have a power of attorney, right? But a person can give permission to a person in your presence and in the presence of other witnesses to have that person sign for them. And that would be signed by proxy. Okay. So the person would sign the person's name. Okay. And then you assign somewhere signature by proxy. Okay. Because we know that it's not the signature of the signer. It's the signature by proxy. And the proxy is going to be the person that you put into your journal. And those witnesses are going to sign, you know, by that signature as well, stating that they were there to witness this person, give this other person permission to sign on their behalf. Right, Gail. So if you cannot do that based on the law in your state, then obviously, yes, you will refuse to do the job. Okay. So then you set the appointment, you explain to the customer what will be required. You meet the customers and they arrive prepared with the document in hand. You review the document and then uh, I ask, what are your next steps? But I just gave you guys your next steps. <laughs> you would have the person sign the way they need to have the witnesses sign. You have to state what this mark is. Um, signature by mark for so-and-so or um, you put um, signer's mark. You could put the person's name and then put mark or whatever. However, you identify that this is that person's mark. And then make sure you have the detailed information in your journal. Okay. I don't use a paper journal. I use an electronic journal and I use Jurat Inc. So my electronic journal actually has in there if I have a person signed by mark. So I'm able to add that information in there. All right, so do you guys want to do these last two scenarios or you want to save them till next time? Let me know in the comments. I made another game for next time. It's a crossword puzzle that we're going to fill out together. And this is what it looks like. These are the questions and then you guys are going to answer it and I'm going to put the answers in. But um, that'll be for another live. <laughs> Lori said, I want to do the rest now. Okay, let me continue on then. All right, scenario number nine. Your customer calls you to get a school document signed and notarized. You set the appointment, explain to the customer what will be required. You meet the customer and they arrive prepared with document in hand. You review the document and notice the customer only presented the signature page. It looks like pages are missing. The customer explains to you that since they only saw one page needed a notary signature and seal, they didn't bring the rest. What do you do? This has actually happened to me more than once. <laughs> and it's so funny. What do you do, guys? They only brought the page that they saw that the notary needed to sign and stamp. They did not bring all the other pages. So what do you do? Correct, Bernita. You need all the pages to complete the notarization. So unfortunately, you're going to have to tell the customer that they're either going to have to go and get the pages and come back. Or if you have another appointment, you're going to have to tell them they have to schedule another appointment with you. But you cannot notarize incomplete documents. Okay. Meaning that all pages have to be present. Correct, Jay. You need all the pages. That's just how it goes. There's no getting around that one. There's not even another option. I need all the pages. Okay. This is why it's super important for notaries to review the documents before you start signing and stamping, before you even take their ID to do anything. Review the documents to make sure you can do it because it just sucks for you to sit there, fill out all that information, and then you can't even perform the notarization. Now you got to complete the journal entry by putting in there that you couldn't complete the notarization because of X, Y, Z. Like why waste, why waste an entry or a page, you know? So 
That's right. Ask them to get the other pages. And for my customer, what happened was they left the pages in the car. So luckily he just went outside, got the rest of the pages, brought them inside. I verify I had all pages because luckily each page had a page number. So I verify it was all the pages. Anything that needed to be filled in was filled in. I did my process, signed, sealed. He was off on his way. But isn't that funny that a person would just come to you with just a signature page? You don't even know what you're signing. <laughs> like what? There's no title, no nothing. You just brought me just a signature page. Yeah, it happens. And people really don't know. So this is why as notaries, it's our job to know our job. Okay. We cannot expect um, the public to know what we can and cannot do. We have to know so that we can educate them and they can be informed. All right. Last scenario. Number 10. Your customer calls you to get an agreement signed and notarized for her child. You set the appointment, explain to the customer what will be required. You meet the customer and they arrive prepared with document in hand. You review the document and notice that the mother and father have to sign the document. The mother explains to you that she was told to sign it and send it back to the father and he will sign it. So what do you do? Really, Jay? Oh, gosh. The life of a notary. <laughs> we see all type of stuff. We could write a book, literally. So what are we doing, guys? Yes, both parents do need to sign. But what if the parents are in different states or they both can't appear before you at the same time? Is there anything else that can be done? Correct, Jay. You can sign for the mother, notarize her signature only. If there is pre-printed verbiage on there and it has a space for you to put the signer's names, you would only put her name and notarize her signature. She will send those documents back to the father and he will meet with another notary. That notary will attach a loose certificate and notarize his signature. So we don't necessarily have to turn the person away unless it states on the document that they both have to be there at the same time, which it probably won't. But you can correct Lori. You're absolutely right. I didn't see your comment. Lori is right. Notarize the part for the um, part of the document for the parent you are with. And then the other parent will notarize with another notary. So good job, guys. So that is it for all my scenarios. So what did you guys think about that? think it was some good brain exercises, test our knowledge of what we do. And I'm so happy to see how all of you guys know what you're doing as a notary. So I have no worries with you guys not knowing what your role is as the notary public in any transaction. So congratulations. Oh, yeah, because I put them in a playlist, Vernita. I saw that I could put the book um, reviews in a playlist. All right, Lori, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Jay, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, good, Vernita. Awesome. Awesome. I'm so happy to hear you guys like the books. I really am. I made them with you guys in mind. Um, the new book. Oh, you said the book club books, but you didn't see the new book. I put the new book reviews in there. I put it in a um in a playlist. You didn't see the playlist for that? I don't even know what it's called. I think it's book reviews playlist, maybe. And I'll show you guys the book that Vernita's talking about. Hold on. I have it behind me. So Vernita is talking about this book here. Let me stop sharing my screen. 
this is the book that she has and it has puzzles in it and stuff it has games and um it has sample documents for you to practice and notarize and then i have the um the answer key in the back of it see yeah fake ids in here and fake scenarios so you can notarize um fill out practice filling out a journal and um okay no worry terry no worry oh here's the documents so you have these sample documents okay so you can see how to you can practice notarizing them and then yeah little notary games in here and stuff oh here's the the puzzles that i have in there too so yeah i thought this was a cool idea i actually did this in 2022 and um at first i just had it as a download but who wants to download 100 pages i think that's what it was 100 dang on pages yeah nobody wants to download that so finally got it in paperback so if you guys are interested so Amazon. And this is the other book, Bernita was saying. Now I do have, I put the book reviews in a um in a playlist, Bernita. So you don't see the playlist for that book. We gotta finish it. I think we're almost done with it, right? Where do we leave off on? 4A. Yeah, we left off on 4A, so we got 4B, 4C, and then 5. So that's three guides left. Oh, good, Jay. I'm happy to hear that, guys. That that makes me so happy. It really does. All right, guys. So before I let you go, did you have any questions about the immigration form specialists that I was talking to you about? Please make sure you do your homework. Please, I don't want anybody getting in trouble. I don't want anybody getting penalties or anything trying to do this because I said do it please do your research every state has their own regulations on what you can do and you may not be able to do it in your state you know or you may need some special certification or licensure you may need to get an additional bond or eno like you just don't know so do your research please if you decide that you want to offer that service um, I am going to be offering that service um, I live in Florida, so you know there are a lot of immigrants here, and the most important thing for you to know is you don't need to speak another language. It definitely is beneficial, you know, but the language that you need to speak is English, and the language that you need to read is English because the application and the instructions are all in English. So that's why they're coming to you because they may not be fluent in English or they may be fluent in English, but the words in the way that they are are just confusing to them. And remember, like I told you, sometimes a person can read something and they're like, what? And they hear somebody else read it. It's the same thing they read, but they understand it because it was read out loud by somebody else. OK, so I'll leave you guys with that. And then um, next Monday, we'll do the crossword puzzle. Uh, I'm going to try to throw some games in here or there, here and there, just to increase engagement, you know, and um, hopefully you guys can find some benefit in that. Okay. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you for joining me and have a wonderful week. And I'll see y'all on next Monday. Peace. <laughs>